Hello, everyone, and welcome to Massive Bio's Multiple Myeloma webinar. Today, we are joined by Dr. Galanopoulos. Welcome. It's nice to have you. Um, my name is Fiona Evans. I am the Director of Patient Relations here at Massive Bio, and I'm thrilled to be joined by you today. Please give us a little introduction. I would like to, uh, at first to uh, uh, thank the organizing committee for giving me the opportunity to participate in this uh, webinar. And uh, I am uh, Dr. Athanasios Galanopoulos from Greece. Uh, I am the head of the hematology clinic in uh, Euroclinic in Athens. And I'm occupied with uh, malignant and non malignant uh, hematologic uh, diseases. Nice to have you here today. Thank you so much. So we'll jump right in. Today we're talking about multiple myeloma. So can you tell us what is multiple myeloma? Yes, multiple myeloma is a, a hematologic uh, cancer malignancy uh, of the plasma cells. I would like to say that plasma cells are very useful cells uh, which are found in the bone marrow of our body and they produce uh, immunoglobulins, uh, which are antibodies who go against the germs and other uh, uh, bacteria in our body, and they are very useful. However, in myeloma, they are transformed to malignant myeloma cells. They uh, overcrowd the bone marrow and also produce very large amounts of these uh, immunoglobulins, which are called in myeloma paraproteins, or M proteins, and uh, uh, this overcrowd of uh, myeloma cells and uh, these uh, great amounts of uh, paraproteins make us the, the clinical picture we have for multiple myeloma patients. Got it. Thank you. And how common is multiple myeloma? Uh, well, it uh, represents about 1.8% uh, of all cancers uh, and uh, is uh, the second most common uh, malign hematologic malignancy. And it's about, uh, uh, we can see in uh, Europe that uh, uh, four to six uh, cases of bat myeloma are discovered every year uh, per uh, 100,000 uh, people. Uh, multiple myeloma is uh, more common in uh, men than women. It's more common in Africa, in African race. And uh, is uh, especially a disease of the elderly people because we say that uh, median uh, time of diagnosis, age of diagnosis in multiple myeloma patients is 69. So uh, a disease of the elderly. And uh, in our days, we're seeing that uh, the number of uh, patients uh, has been increased. And this is why now we have more effective therapies. And uh, this is uh, the, uh, if we have uh, more effective therapies, we have a better survival. Excellent. Always happy to hear that. Can you explain the different stages of multiple, multiple myeloma and what patients should be aware of? The signs, you need the signs. Okay, well, we have to know that multiple myeloma uh, affects uh, three parts of our body. The blood, it affects uh, the kidneys, and uh, the bones. Concerning the blood, uh, who, uh, as I have uh, explained, uh, the multiple myeloma uh, uh, cells overcrowd bone marrow, so uh, they suppress the other series of the bone marrow, uh, which are the red cells, the white cells, and the platelets. So we have uh, uh, the consequences of anemia. Uh, when the patient uh, feels fatigue, uh, uh, cannot go to, to his uh, exercises, cannot uh, live uh, in a normal life, uh, have a shortness of breath, cannot walk very well. Uh, we have uh, leukopenia uh, when we have uh, uh, low uh, white blood cells. And this means that uh, the, the the, the body is susceptible to many uh, uh, bacteria and uh, infections, such as pneumonia, etc. And uh, when we have uh, low platelet counts, we have uh, uh, easier to, to make uh, bruises, to make uh, hemorrhages, uh, and all this stuff. So, concerning the, 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 bone, uh, the, the bones, 
uh, we have uh, uh, noticed that, that uh, there is a uh, uh, bone loss and uh, many osteolytic bone lesions in uh, the skeleton of the patient. And uh, because of that, the patient feels very, uh, very pain is very painful. The all these are very painful and uh, uh, the, the, the patient needs uh, treatment. And uh, another consequence uh, uh, is that uh, when the, there was a destruction of the, of the bones, uh, uh, a certain uh, 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 element uh, which is uh, calcium is uh, released from the bones. We know that our bones have uh, calcium. So calcium uh, uh, releases from the bone, it uh, comes into the, 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 the blood, and uh, we have a condition which is called hypercalcemia. And uh, this is a very important uh, condition because a very uh, dangerous condition because the, chef, the patient feels very thirsty, is uh, confused, uh, cannot uh, go, uh, cannot uh, think, uh, have dizziness, all the stuff. And uh, this, uh, um, this condition needs uh, emergence, emergent uh, uh, appropriate uh, treatment. And uh, concerning the, the third part, which is, uh, uh, as we said, uh, uh, blood, uh, bones, uh, kidneys, uh, the, the, amount, the, the, uh, the calcium and the paraproteins, uh, which are uh, too many in our body, uh, go to the kidney and uh, they destroy the kidney. Uh, in other way, uh, uh, a patient will, can come to us with uh, renal dysfunction or perhaps renal failure. We have seen many patients that were uh, introduced to the, come, uh, into the, the hospital and uh, they have renal insufficiency or have renal failure and they put uh, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in certain treatment uh, because of bad myeloma. So the, the first sign of uh, 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 and symptom is renal, renal failure. So all these uh, problems and, uh, and the patient who have renal function, you have edema in his uh, face, in his uh, um, uh, arms, or in his legs. Uh, it's not, uh, yeah, he has less urine. And uh, all the stuff that is, is very, is a very um, uh, different uh, consequence and condition uh, which uh, needs uh, uh, immediate uh, treatment in the hospital. Yeah, right. So uh, before it would get to that point, uh, is can multiple myeloma be diagnosed before that? Before that, you know, it's very um, apparent that someone is very, very sick. Uh, well, uh, we have uh, we have. Uh, um, uh, we have uh, fatigue, and uh, we have uh, renal fracture, or don't feel very well, or have uh, pains in our bone. Uh, uh, I have seen many patients who go for six months in different doctors, and they say, I have, you know, I have uh, uh, bone uh, pain in my hips, in my ribs, in my, uh, in my spine, and uh, uh, the orthopedicians uh, don't understand it sometimes. Yeah. And they give them uh, anti-inflammatory drugs, and it is uh, the bone disease, the bone disease of the mat myeloma. And uh, uh, so, uh, is uh, this patient is uh, very, comes to us very late, yeah. when uh, all uh, all the, the the conditions of the mat myeloma have been developed. It is not good for him. Right, right. And what tests do you use to diagnose multiple myeloma? So uh, to, uh, when we have a patient with a, uh, a possible diagnosis of mat myeloma, we have to start from the blood. We make blood tests, a complete blood count, where we can see anemia, leukopenia, or thrombocytopenia. Uh, we go uh, by chemistry uh, results uh, to see the urea, uh, creatinine, to see uh, a special, we have to, to go on with special tests such as uh, 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 protein electrophoresis of the, in the blood, uh, 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 protein and uh, uh, infiltration of blood and urine. Uh, and uh, then we go on as a hematologist uh, to, uh, to make a bone marrow aspiration and bone marrow biopsy where we can find what is the percentage of uh, plasma cells in the bone marrow. 
Uh, uh, at the same time, we can uh, set uh, cytogenetics, which is a very useful uh, examination because it gives us if he has cyten cyten cytogenetic abnormalities. And the cytogenetic abnormalities are very bad for him because they put him in a very aggressive form of bad myeloma. And also, we go for fish. Uh, and uh, uh, finally, uh, we want to know. How, uh, uh, how good uh, uh, if there is problem with his uh, bones. Uh, we, uh, uh, the last uh, 10 years, we use a whole body CT, low dose whole body CT to see all the skeleton, mm -hmm. or we can use uh, uh, alternatively uh, MRI of the whole body. Uh, we can uh, uh, alternatively, we can use PET CT where we can see all the bones, all the bones of the body. And uh, we take uh, in account all this stuff, and uh, we make the diagnosis of multiple myeloma. The certain uh, diagnostic criteria, but it's not uh, the. Uh, it's not. I cannot uh, then uh, refer them now because uh, because it's for uh, physicians, you know, to, for hematologists. And uh, we have certain criteria where we say that uh, this patient has uh, uh, for sure about myeloma, and uh, this patient has a cap criteria. criteria well, he uh, is ready to, to start for treatment. Excellent. Okay. And what are, what are the standard treatments available for multiple myeloma? So, uh, during the last uh, uh, 10 years, we have seen that uh, three classes of uh, uh, treatment of uh, drugs, uh, I would say, which are uh, proteasome inhibitors, Immunomodulatory drugs, images as we say, and the dexamethasone are three classes of drugs who are very, very effective in mild myeloma. Uh, in all the times, you had only one uh, drug, um, nothing else, uh, but now we're happy to have uh, uh, try this kind of drugs and uh, to use it to use them in, uh, in our amametarium for the treatment of mild myeloma patients. And uh, which uh, kind of uh, uh, drug will we use uh, from the uh, from the each uh, uh, group of uh, these uh, three uh, drugs uh, classes of drugs uh, would be uh, bent will be will be uh, on um, depend on uh, uh, on the condition of the patient if uh, the patient uh, has comorbidities uh, he has a bad performance status. Uh, how is uh, the cytogenetic abnormalities? Um, he has uh, bone uh, lithium, uh, lesions, bone lithium, uh, lesions, and all the stuff. Uh, if the patient is, uh, because we say that uh, the patient can be uh, either standard risk or intermediate risk or high risk or very high risk, it depends on uh, what we've seen with all these exams we have done so far. Got it. And is what is the role or and effectiveness of chemotherapy when treating multiple myeloma? Well, well as I said, uh, these uh, drugs are very uh, effective, and uh, we use uh, now not only one drug but three drugs uh, as triplets. And uh, uh, for example, we uh, we put uh, Belgaid, we put uh, lenalidomide, and uh, dexamethasone. Uh, which uh, have seen, we have, uh, 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 and we have seen uh, very good results. For example, uh, the overall survival has been increased to uh, perhaps to eight uh, percent for uh, in uh, for five years. For five years, uh, the overall survival is, uh, you know, I think, is, is a nice number, eight uh, percent. We have uh, complete responses at uh, about sixty uh, percent with this uh, regimen. And also, uh, uh, progression free survival, it's about uh, 50 months, uh, which is uh, also a very good, uh, very good point. And uh, uh, during the, the last uh, two years, we have uh, put uh, we had the addition and the insertion in our monetarium of monochrome antibodies, uh, for example, Daratumba, which is a Vavra antibody against CD38, which is a uh, uh, put in, uh, which is uh, located in the surface of the plasma cells. And uh, uh, we give uh, not triplets, but, uh, but uh, tetraplets, I would say, four drugs. 
So when we uh, we put when we added daratumumab in our mercado in this treatment, we show we show uh, we we show that uh, the, the 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 results were much better. Uh, so uh, the over survival is about uh, 90 percent. It's something very nice. And better rates, better rates, better over survival, better progress on free free supply. And we're we're happy for that. Yes, that's very good. So these advancements in immunotherapy, how have they impacted the landscape for multiple myeloma? So immunotherapy is something very, very important. Thank you for your question. Yes. When we say immunotherapy is that uh, we give the immune system the possibility to go against the plasma cell, the myeloma cell. And it is done with uh, these uh, two, uh, with the, these uh, um, ways. Uh, when we say immunotherapy, we mean monoclonal antibodies. We mean uh, uh, antibody drug consultates. We mean uh, bispecific antibodies and cut the cell therapy. All these are the immunotherapy. If you wanted to explain uh, in its uh, 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 occasion, excuse me. Because of the telephone. Yeah. Can we take to, to put it again? Yep. Okay. Um, okay. Is that again? Yep. I'll ask the question again about immunotherapy. Okay. So, how have advancements in immunotherapy impacted the treatment landscape for multiple myeloma? Well, when, uh, it's, a very, it's a very important uh, question. Thank you for that question. Immunotherapy is something very important uh, because it gives the immune system the possibility to go against the myeloma cell. And uh, immunotherapy uh, consists of uh, monoclonal antibodies, uh, antibody conjugated to, uh, to uh, antibody drug conjugates, uh, by specific antibodies and uh, cut cell therapy. Uh, monoclonal antibodies are bound are bound to certain parts of the of the surface of the plasma cell. For example, CD38, and uh, destroy it, and uh, it goes out. Uh, in uh, in the second uh, immunotherapy, uh, uh, which is uh, antibody drug consolidates, the antibody is uh, bound to a chemotherapy agent, and so the chemotherapy agent comes very near air to the plasma cells and it destroys it. Uh, I, I said them in a very quick uh, uh, way to, 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 to take an idea of what is uh, everything uh, of that. And uh, we have by specifically the bodies where the, the, the body binds to two uh, points. First, to the uh, surface of the plasma cells, and second, uh, to the surface of a uh, CT3 uh, T cell. So it gives the possibility, CD3, uh, the T cell, uh, for example, to go against the plasma cell. And finally, we have uh, the backbone of the, the promising uh, therapy in, of the future, which is the CAR T cells. It's very important uh, in very quick uh, words and very, uh, very quickly, I would like to say you that uh, we, uh, we collect uh, T cells from the body of, of the patient we send them to a special uh, laboratory which uh, manufactures uh, the, 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 the cells and they uh, produce uh, CAR T cells. And then these uh, CAR T cells, they are reinfused in the body of the patient. And uh, these CAR T cells go against plasma cells. It's very revolutionary, it's very effective, it's very nice, it's, it's uh, the treatment of the future. Yeah, uh, that's fantastic. Yes. Uh, it, uh, but uh, um, uh, you know that uh, uh, there are some side effects. Uh, when we give uh, cutty cells, uh, we have uh, side effects. Uh, there is a release of cytokines in the, in the body. So we have the uh, CRS uh, symptoms, the CRS uh, syndrome. And also uh, we have uh, neurologic symptoms, which is, uh, we, we call it icons. And also we have uh, leukopenias. For all these uh, signs and symptoms, uh, uh, there must be a certain uh, treatment from the hematologist. There are urgent uh, uh, cases and uh, urgent uh, conditions, and uh, uh, the hematologist must be alert uh, to, to uh, near to the patient to give the appropriate 
uh, treatment because uh, it may cause even death if uh, they're not faced in the, in the right way. Mm -hmm. Got it. <clears throat> Um, so, in what ways do targeted therapies offer benefits over the traditional multiple myeloma treatment? That's a very nice question. We have the chemotherapy, the normal chemotherapy we have in the past, and now, now in the days, we have the immunotherapy. So, we have a double therapy. We give chemo and immuno, a, a immuno, immuno, immuno chem, uh, therapy. so combined, combined modality therapy. And uh, what uh, uh, leaves out chemotherapy, it is done by immunotherapy. Because immunotherapy, you know, goes on the surface of plasma cells. It is bound on certain parts and the antigens of uh, the surface, as I explained before, uh, in the surface of the plasma cells. And it gives them the opportunity to kill it and uh, to go away. Excellent. Um, what are some of the most promising emerging therapies for multiple myeloma that are currently being researched? Uh, I would say for this, I mean immunotherapy, and I would say that uh, monoclonal antibodies, uh, not monoclonal antibodies, uh, it is, uh, now it's all the monoclonal antibodies. Let's say the last two, which is uh, uh, by, specific, by specific antibodies and CAR cell therapy. These are, um, uh, these are the new uh, immunotherapeutic uh, agents and um, possibility, possibilities. Uh, for, for the first, uh, by particular, the bodies, are, are, they are in, the, in our armamentarium so far. Uh, here in Greece, we have uh, these uh, drugs, and I think that uh, in Europe and in America, they are used very uh, widely. And uh, we use them in uh, patients who are uh, refractory to previous uh, treatments because now uh, uh, on, a, on a patient that lives uh, longer, we see patients who are triple, refractory, uh, relapsed, uh, four or five, uh, with his refractory or has relapsed after previous five treatments. I have one such patient uh, who uh, I treat him now with uh, by specific antibodies, and I'm very happy that I have uh, because I didn't I, I, because if I didn't have this kind of treatment, the patient would be now dead. Yeah. So we have uh, new drugs, new agents, new uh, uh, possibilities to help our uh, patients. And on the other hand, to have CAT T cell therapy, I think is more important, more promising. Is the future treatment uh, because we manufacture uh, uh, the, the T cells, they make, they make them very strong and they give them again to the patient and they go and kill and they go to kill the plasma cells. But, uh, however, uh, it's good, but uh, it can be even better in, in the future because, uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, it's not. Uh, everything because we see even elapse after these uh, therapies, even after by specific antibodies or even after uh, CAR cell therapy. Yes, yeah. It's so important. Research is really the key to, you know, producing these um, advanced therapies. So we always encourage patients to look into those options as well. Um, so for patients using, you know, taking treatment, um, how are the side effects from multiple myeloma treatments managed, uh, to ensure that the patient is, uh, comfort, comfortable and, you know, safe and. No, yes. You know that every, everything has its bad and good uh, parts, yeah. you know. Uh, so we, uh, we have uh, uh, better results uh, with this, these new uh, treatments, but uh, we have uh, also and the side effects and the problems. So, uh, as I told before, we have anemia, leukopenia, thrombocytopenia. In patients who are uh, very anemic, we have the, the possibility to give them uh, 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 growth factors, for example, uh, we give them erythropoietin, you know, erythropoietin, 
will give uh, uh, GCSF, which can increase the white blood cells, and uh, the delta protein can, can increase the uh, red blood cells. Uh, concerning the, uh, uh, the, the, the white blood cells, we give a GCSF uh, to prevent the patient from uh, future uh, uh, infections. And uh, when we have uh, low platelets because of the chemotherapy, we give uh, them transfusions of, uh, of platelets. Uh, another problem, these are the, uh, the cytopenias. Uh, uh, when uh, um, uh, we have bone disease, we have the bi bicycle biphosphonates, uh, which are very uh, 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 very nice uh, drugs uh, that they give uh, because they make the remodeling of the bone. Uh, and uh, they uh, decrease the level of the calcium. Uh, another thing is that uh, these patients are, uh, you know, prone to, uh, to infections, so we give them antibiotics. And uh, when they have a certain uh, 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 infection, but also we use, uh, you use uh, antibiotics as prophylactic therapy. And uh, perhaps when we know that uh, uh, very, uh, a treatment is very aggressive, we have to protect our, or, uh, pro to give a, a prophylactic treatment in our patients. Uh, because they are, these patients are prone to make uh, viral infections, so they will give them antivirals. Uh, uh, may, they may, these patients may make uh, infection from uh, uh, promocystis carini, so give them uh, drugs, uh, bacteria for, for this uh, purpose. And uh, also, um, uh, we uh, are near to the patient and uh, whatever uh, uh, he needs, he can take. And also, because these patients feel uh, uh, back pains, and uh, you know the, the back, uh, sorry, back uh, bone pains, and you know that the bone pains are very, 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 is a very, very difficult condition. Um, and uh, we use uh, uh, opioids, uh, we use uh, uh, painkillers, painkillers or opioids, uh, it depends uh, on uh, the condition of the patient. And uh, finally, uh, when uh, we use a CAR T cell therapy, as I told you, we have uh, a CRS uh, syndrome, uh, which is a very serious uh, condition. Uh, the patient uh, must take certain drugs uh, to, to uh, he may have a, a low blood pressure, so we give him uh, drugs to increase the blood pressure. We give uh, fluids, many fluids. Uh, we uh, were uh, over the, over the uh, the patient. Uh, we uh, uh, by his side, and uh, if uh, the, the 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 condition worsens, we, he can go to the ICU. And uh, uh, if he has uh, neurologic symptoms, we, uh, we can give him uh, we can give him another uh, the appropriate treatment. Um, all this, uh, all this uh, treatment is uh, is for our patients when they are on chemotherapy regimens. Excellent. It's good to know that you have, you know, when patients are having some, if they have side effects, you have some backups to help them. That's that's great news, and I know you take extra care of them uh, always. So next, I wanted to ask about uh, stem cell transplantation. Um, what criteria is used to determine eligibility for stem cell transplantation? Well, uh, when um, a, a stem cell transplant is a very important uh, uh, treatment, and uh, we use it in, in newly diagnosed patients. When a, a patient is newly diagnosed and uh, uh, he has taken the triplet, as I have explained, uh, then if he's uh, lower than 70 years old, he's eligible to go to a transplant. He uh, is uh, put in uh, high dose therapy, and, uh, uh, and then he takes the stem cell transplant. After the stem cell transplant, he, go, he goes on to the consolidation treatment, as we say, and then we go for a long period in the maintenance treatment. Uh, which patients are eligible for that procedure for stem cell transplant? Not only patients. Uh, so, first is the age. The patient must be under 70 years old. 
Second, uh, he, uh, he has to have a uh, uh, normal uh, pulmonary and uh, cardiac uh, function. Uh, he has uh, he, he may uh, be able to to undergo all these uh, high dose chemotherapy uh, help his, his performance status and all the, we put all them together and uh, we see if our patient uh, even if he is uh, 70 years old and under uh, if he has all this stuff uh, good and he can go on uh, with uh, stem cell transplant we can say that uh, uh, stem cell transplant uh, gives better results in a newly diagnosed patients when they uh, they begin with the chemotherapy or the triplet and they go with the transplant. The uh, results are even are even more better. Are better. Excellent. And can you provide some insights into the use of CAR T therapy uh, for multiple myeloma and the and its future potential? As, uh, as I told you, that is a very nice therapy, is very promising, is a very is by smart therapy. We make CAR T cells in the laboratory and then we infuse them to the patient. And these cells go against uh, the plasma cell. It's a very smart uh, thought, uh, a procedure. Uh, so I think that uh, this is uh, the, the, the treatment that, that will be uh, in the future. But uh, as I told you, uh, there are, um, and uh, uh, however, there are uh, uh, relapses after CAT cell therapy is very promising, but uh, it can be even better. How can it be better? We, uh, we usually, when we use treatments uh, after three, four uh, line treatment of therapy, the, the treatment cannot show its effectiveness. So, if we use it in a, in an earlier stage of the disease, it may be more efficacious. Uh, if uh, uh, we not, uh, as I explained that uh, uh, we take the T cells, they, the, they go to the laboratory and then they infuse. So there is a duration of uh, time. Uh, if we uh, make this duration of time uh, uh, not not so long, it's shorter. If it is shorter. I think that uh, we won't give the opportunity to the to our body to to relapse and uh, will be very more efficacious. So, if uh, all other modalities, if we use, I think all the stuff, if we use all the stuff, and uh, especially the certain laboratories, we can make uh, this CAR T cell therapy more efficacious. So, it, perhaps uh, we make in this treatment, we may. Uh, um, help our, uh, our patients or we, we may make the patients uh, to, to be a mild myeloma to be uh, to, to to make it uh, to change it to a, a chronic disease like other chronic diseases and uh, help or perhaps cure. <laughs> no one knows if in the, in the, in the upper future uh, mild myeloma is, uh, uh, is a cure because of these uh, newer drugs, newer, smarter uh, chemotherapies and uh, uh, new modalities. Yeah, that's great. Absolutely. Um, research is definitely the key to, you know, hopefully finding the cure for um, all of these terrible diseases. So uh, I think we actually, I think you actually answered the next two questions already. So I don't think we need to ask those. And that is the, you know, the end of the question. So I'll just now you know, say a little thank you to you and then um, end, end the recording, okay? Thank you very much for this kind invitation and by giving me the, uh, the opportunity to participate in this nice webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Galapagos. We appreciate everything you do for patients and we appreciate your time today and wish you the very best. Thank you so much. Thank you.